as you come in through the door, the red sergeant are on this side. As you come in, I don't know what, which side your heart you be. Whatever your heart you be, this side is this side. So that's where the gents are. Otherwise, welcome so much. Thank you so much for coming. We would want to start our program. And uh, we want to thank God for everyone for coming. This is Oxford for those who have come from far. I see some people from Leeds, some people from Sheffield, some people from Surrey, and many other places. On behalf of the Oxfordians, most welcome in this place. I would want us to stand on our feet as we, as we begin. I do want to pray as we continue. And after that, we are going to sing our first hymn because um, uh, Mr. Samuel knew, knew the Lord, so it is important that we sing a hymn as we celebrate his life. And it is important we encourage the family. Uh, we can at least smile and be strong for them as we celebrate together. So let's pray. Our dear loving Father, we thank you. We give you praise. You are the giver of life. And you are the Lord who takes it. When you find it appropriate, dear Father. And we want to thank you because of the life that you had given Samuel. We want to honor you because, Lord, it was a precious gift unto us. And therefore, Lord, you have found it worth for him to join you, to live with you in eternity. And therefore, as we remember his life, we pray for strength, we pray for grace. But that you may see us through, even as we remember the time that you have spent with him. May you help us to be grateful for, Lord, there are those who are born and they never saw the years that our dad has lived. But we are grateful. We give you honor and praise as we begin this service. We pray that you may be with us, guide us and lead us from the beginning to the end. May all be well to the glory and honor of your name, we pray. Amen. We are going to sing our first hymn, and uh, we have our sister who is going to do that, Sister Cynthia. Praise. Oh, we are singing hymns, and I understand they are here. Uh, the, if we can have the programs distributed so that we, we can all be together. We don't want our sisters to struggle singing alone. Whatever the programs are, please, if we can be going to be passed quickly. Where is Brother Edward? They are somewhere, because I have one. So if we can, oh yeah, yeah. There they are, there they are. For those who are a bit digital, you can scan the QR code behind, behind, behind the program so that we can share. There are not many. You can scan the QR code and you are going to get the program. You scan the QR code, it is good as if you have a hard copy so that we can join together. Those who are digitally survey, they can, you can scan it, then we can all be together. I believe everybody has got one pamphlet.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord and I welcome you like our pastor has welcomed you once again. Karibuni sana and we're going to start with our first hymn, aim, which is It Is Well. So you sing with us. We're all singing together in Jesus' name. Okay, everyone got their lyrics? Okay. One, two, let's go. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord thou hast told me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Oh, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though sad and should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded, that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul so it is well with my soul i know it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the place of the glorious thought my sin not in power but the is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul oh it is well is well oh, with my soul with my oh yes it is well it is well with my soul oh Lord here's the when my face shall be sighed, the clouds be roll back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. The trump shall resound 
And the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, with my, tell your soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, oh, it is well, it is well, it is well, and with my soul, with my soul, it is well. Amen. It is well. I said it is well Amen. with our soul. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And therefore we can praise the Lord and celebrate his goodness because we are alive and well. Are we not? We are well and we thank God. We want to have our first leading. You may have your seat. God bless you. Thank you. We are going to have our first leading, and uh, the person who is going to do our first leading is. Uh, bro is uh, Brother Tony, who is going to lead to do our first leading. Good evening, church. Thank you for coming. It's a sad, sad day, but we have to accept the Lord's will. So our first reading comes from the book of Job, verse 1 to 10. Do not mortals have a hard service on earth? Are not their days like those of a hired labor? Like a slave longing for the evening shadows, or a hired laborer waiting to be paid. So I have been allotted months of futility and nights of misery have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, how long before I get up? The night drags on and I toss and turn until dawn. My body is clothed with worms and scabs my skin is broken and festering. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. Remember, O oh God, that my life is just but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again. The eye that now sees will see me no longer. You will look for me, but I will be no more. As a cloud vanishes and is gone, so one who goes down to the grave does not return. He will never come to this house again. His place will know him no more. That's the end of the first reading. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. We are going to go to the next uh, bit. Sister Cynthia, sure you are lady. We are going to sing another hymn. We want to celebrate the Lord with another hymn. Please, Sister Cynthia, you can lead us with that. Let's, let's rise up on our feet. We, uh, there will be a lot of standing and sitting, a lot of standing and sitting. Let's celebrate them. Jason Genaga, that's our second hymn. Um, we can all sing together. Jason Genaga. Ne when a shiwa coo, oh, get a co, 
beautiful prayer. Just to bring to your attention, I needed to bring this to your attention earlier, that this program is aired. There are people who are watching from America, there are people who are watching from Kenya and many other places. So just be aware of that. So if somebody te to tells you tomorrow that they saw you somewhere, don't be surprised. They saw you here. So it's good to be aware of that. And uh, not with Deona with Kanina Kukinini, Kuidia Dorama Mushi, Ramare Rorera, Okimera, Gayamu Hinyanamo Mirelie. It omega the reason why we are celebrating. Because when I look at that banner, I see that our dad was born in 1948. Those are so many years ago. I think when we were talking sometime with him, he told me he went to Saudi Arabia, I think 1970 something. I said, wow. I think that's when I was getting, when I was, yeah, I was about seven years. <laughs> when he went to Saudi Arabia, you can imagine. So it, it is important to celebrate. It's, in, it's not that so. I know we have roast, but uh, on the other side, we need to celebrate the goodness of God. Because we know there are people who probably are the s born the same time with him and they are no more. But I want to thank God. 1948 is not yesterday. It's years and years. And uh, we want to thank God. This time we want to hear the eulogy from Baba Jabi. Baba Jabi. Is Baba Jabi with us? Okay, it seems Baba Jambi is not with us. Has somebody seen him somewhere? Yeah, my program says Baba Jambi is the one to lead the eulogy. We want the wisdom. Is Baba Jambi here? Then Mama Jabi can stand on behalf of them there. Okay. Oh, he's coming. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, I, I, if you see somebody who is new to you, you can, you can shake their hands. You can, you don't. This is where people connect, they network. Uh, they say your network is your net worth. So if you see a new person, uh, network with each other. I'm waiting for Baba Jabi to lead the eulogy. I hope you are going to network so that we can uh, we we can uh, make our net worth higher we can increase our net worth so we can connect with the people baba jabi we are waiting Um, ha hello everyone, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, my name is Francis uh, Bamba Jambi and um, brother to Mama Kevin. I'll read the tribute. Uh, the red Samuel Kamau Gadaya was born on August 1948 at Sa Sa Sam uh, Mau Summit. White man's place called Martin Farm in Jogo. He was son to Rate John Kamau, Buddha, Rate Wangoi Kamau, Buddha, and Rate Tabitha Wangoi. He was brother to Rate Francis Maina Kamau, FK, Susan Wairemo, Jane Muthoni, uh, Rate Anne Wanja. Mary Jockey, Rate Monica Murugi, Ibrahim Maina, 
Reit Joseph Mwangi, Sarah Wanjiro, Robert Gachoka, and the Reit Josea Day Kamau. Education. The Reit Samuel Karanja Kamau Gadaya studied at Ipere Primary School, Mau Summit. Uh, thereafter, he joined medical training school and later gained, school, uh, gained driving skills while working. Uh, growing up, the late Samuel Karanja Kamau Gadaya was born in Sao, uh, Summit, Mau Summit uh, during the state of emergency. His family relocated to Muranga County, specific, uh, specifically to Mogoiri in the local eight area of Gatara. Once the situation stabilized, they returned to Haraka Farm. Later in life, Samuel moved back to Karoga, Mau Summit, after purchasing land to establish his residence close to his parents, siblings, and friends. The journey reflects his deep connection to his, to his roots and his commitment to family and community. Marriage. The late Samuel Karanja Kamau married his first wife, the late Mary Wangoi Karanja, in 1974. Together, they were blessed with the children, Beatrice Wangare, Naomi Muthoni, Joycefine Wairimo, the late Milka Jambi, Susan Nyambura, Eunice Jerry, George Kamau, and Joseph Ngunjiri. On August 2nd, 20, uh, 2002, Samuel's beloved wife, Mary Wangoi, passed away. Later on November 1st, 2008, Samuel remarried, celebrating his union with Jude Karanja. They were blessed with a son, Kevin Kamau Karanja. Samuel was a stepfather to Darius Wanjiro, Grace Jambi, and Grace Jambi. Samuel's life was deeply enriched by his family, and his legacy continues through his children and loved ones. Work. The red Samuel Karanja worked in several sectors. He embarked on a career in agriculture and livestock farming on a sm small scale. His younger friends later invited him to Nairobi, where they assisted him to kickstart his professional journey as a driver at HZ Construction Company in Nairobi. He was part of the crew that constructed Great North Road as a driver. He later progressed to Outspan Hotel Nyeri as a tour guide, and thereafter worked as a long-distance truck driver in Saudi Arabia, Libya, Rwanda, and Burundi. He also invested in public transportation, i.e. Matatu by the name Wabuda Tours, and other businesses, uh, business ventures. Life in the UK. The late Samuel Karanja relocated to United Kingdom in 1998 and worked in different companies, namely Royal Mail UK from 2000 to 2003. Samuel Karanja Kamau later moved and settled in Oxford City, where he met his soulmate, Jude Karanja. He found employment with the Stagecoach Bus Company working for the Oxford, uh, Oxford Tube Service, where he served uh, diligently until his retirement in 2022. Even after retirement, Samuel's commitment and strong work ethic led him to resume part-time roles, continuing to contribute to his community and workplace with education, uh, with dedication and his presence and service left a lasting impact on those around him. Church. The red Samuel Karanja was a member of St. Mark ACK Mausamit. He was baptized and confirmed 
Thereafter, when he moved to Oxford, he joined Oxford Word of Faith Church in Oxford, where he has been worshipping. Our dear father, Mze Kamau, was a beloved member of our church family, known for his warm smile, generosity, consistency, and unwavering faith that rifted everyone around him. Though he will be deeply missed, we find comfort knowing that he is at peace in the presence of our Lord. Oxford Word of Faith, Pastor Charles. Illness. The late Samuel Karanja Kamau began to have uh, health issues on July 1st, 2024. Just a day after interacting with Oxford Kenyan men at a social gathering. As a result, he started undergoing regular medical checkups at, uh, at both at his local health center and the hospital, and received a variety of treatments. Samuel's health challenges still didn't deter him from visiting his family in Washington State and Texas in the United States. Regrettably, on October 22, 2024, he started feeling unwell again and was later taken and admitted to JL Hospital in Oxford. Samuel passed away peacefully on October 31, 2024, surrounded by his loved ones, friends, and Pastor Charles. His absence will be deeply felt by everyone who knew him. He was a husband, father, uncle, grandfather, and friend to many, a great patriarch. He was selfishness, selfless man who went through his life helping others. He was royal and a true gentleman who taught us values of hard work, importance of family, and to always stay true to himself. We really cherished you. Your love and care, you have really fought a good fight. You have finished the race, you have kept the faith. Thank you. Thank you, Baba Jabi. God bless you. I would want us to stand. Let's stand before we hear the tributes and sing Amazing Grace house with the sound then we can prepare ourselves for those who are giving tributes to be ready for that amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me Amen. 
seats so that we can prepare to We want to hear the tributes, and the first tribute we are going to hear is from the wife, Mama Kevin, who is going to give us the first tribute. God is good. And all the time, I'm going to lay, uh, to give the tribute for Mama Kevin. My name is Mari from Wakefield, for those who doesn't know me, or Mama Shiko. My flower has withered. My heart bleeds as I have watched you over the past few months, full of life and appetite. I'll forever treasure the memories we shared. I remember when we had driven along M1 to the clotheslines in Wakefield, seeking out to the latest pieces from your favorite designers, where our taste of quality fabric would be met. What a treasure. Fear thee well, my isle of beauty. Fearlessly, you approached my parents to make our union formal and legal. You assured them of my safety, that even in death, they were certain I was safe with you. You wanted us to be blend. You wanted us to blend our two families and found ways of us to experience life together by advocating for unity and, compa and compassion towards everyone development. You are a shield to my two daughters, whom you took as your own. An idol to our son, Kevin. You had a father's heart and a special place in my heart. You are my hidden strength. Your love for Nyamachoma was unmatched. I saw you share moments with, ev with the ever welcoming visitors. You ensured that everyone danced danced to the tunes of their hearts. This is a virtue I will take down to my generations. To you, driving was not only a career, but therapeutic. It helped you kill anxiety, as I was always ready to embrace you when you came home. Basking in the cold of November is a tradition I will observe religiously in Oxford to honor and keep your memories alive forever. Now that my flower has withered, I feel the weight of the whole earth on me. With my source of strength gone, mourning is the sole way to heal. Farewell, my love, until we meet again. Thank you. The next tribute you are going to hear is from George, who is the son of uh, Mzekamau. A tribute to Dad. my friend. It's okay. It's okay. Dad was a man of truth, <coughs> steadfast and courageous. Even when speaking the truth, even when speaking the truth was difficult. He lived with integrity teaching us the importance of honesty through his words and actions. He had a special bond with my children, showering them with love and always treating them as his top priority. To them, he was their number one, creating memories they will cherish forever. Family meant everything to dad. 
He believed in unity and constantly emphasized its importance. We are deeply grateful that we were all by his side during his final moments, giving him the love and support he had always given us. Dad's determination was truly inspiring. He would wake up at 3 a.m. full of energy and drive, teasing me for loving my bed and reminding me that I was still too young to be so comfortable. His work ethic and pre- perseverance were unmatched and they motivated everyone around him. He was also a connector, someone who wanted the best for everyone he encountered. Dad would often spend hours on the phone, on loudspeaker, sometimes dozing off mid-conversation, but always eager to share his world with others. He introduced me to so many of his friends, passing me the phone to speak to them, for those I had even never met. His warmth extended far and wide, creating a network of relationship built on kindness and sincerity. In his final moments, Dad wanted to convey a message, could convey a message, but he struggled to find the words. Instead, he crowned me with his heart. That simple gesture spoke volumes. It was his way of passing on a legacy, a responsibility, and his unwavering confidence in me. I'm grateful for the assurance that he was at a peace until the very end. And the heart scene now symbolizes the responsibility I carry forward in his honor. Dad, thank you for the lessons you taught me, especially your secret to making the perfect barbecue nyamachoma, a skill that brought so many, so much joy to everyone. I know you made promises to some people here, and while I may not fully fill your shoes, I promise to try my best to keep the flame alive. You were, and always will be, an irreplaceable part of our lives. Thank you for your love your wisdom, and your endless support. We miss you deeply, but we'll continue to honor your memory in everything we do. Rest in peace, Dad. Thank you, George, for remembering the promises your dad made, and I'm one of them. So I'll be seeing you. You fulfill the, the promise. He promised Nyamachoma, so I'll be seeing you. We want to continue to hear tribute from Kevin. Hello, everyone. I wanted to start by thanking everyone for coming to show your tribute towards our late father, Sabu Kamau. Dad was a loving, strong, kind, compassionate man. He was a man of the people and could be argued to be a beacon of light in the community. Sam had a very warm smile and a genuine interest in others, making those around him feel valued and heard. He gave so many wise advices, some that I didn't even understand and would leave me thinking but his words were like a learning process. As life went on, I started to understand what his words meant. Losing my father made me realize that there's no other man that wants to see you do better than themselves except your dad. He always tells me about his life struggles and and how he went from nothing to something. And I find it very aspiring because I wouldn't even know what to do if I was in his shoes. Sam was also a very Sam was also an individual that went out his way to help those in need, whether through a small act of kindness like giving a lend, like lending a listening ear, or evening through, and or even through larger gestures like volunteering his time to come see you, for comfort and support. His empathy allows him to connect deeply with others, and his presence can uplift spirits, and create a sense of belonging leaving a lasting impact on everyone he meets. 
He was also very motivational and never and ne- he was also very motivational and never liked staying in the house doing nothing. As you all probably know, he was an ex Oxford tube coach driver for over twenty years until he retired. Although he retired, he still wanted to work as sing as as sing at home was not his thing. He liked to get active and would even go on long walks to c- to keep him fit and healthy. Sometimes he would encourage me to come with him and it would be very nice and peaceful and we would just talk the whole time. Talking with Mzer was not like a little chat. No matter where it is, on the phone or in real life, if you're talking to him, you're going to be having a long conversation. If, even if you wasn't planning on it. Me and my dad share so many good memories. It's like a never-ending list, and if I was to talk on them, I would keep you here waiting until the next day. So to save you guys some time, I won't be doing that. Mimzer Kamal, rest in peace. I will forever love and miss you from the bottom of my heart, and I will never forget the greatness you have done for not only our family, but the community as a whole. Although you are not with us physically, you are still with me in my heart, and I shall continue your legacy that you have created. Long live Samuel Kamal. Thank you, Kevin. God bless you. We are going to have another tribute from, which is going to be done by Mama Karemi on behalf of the children in Kenya. Please do come. Mama Karemi. Praise God. Uh, my name is Lucy, or Wakademi, as Zen knew me, and these are my friends. We come from Kambari Sari. I'm going to read the tribute from children in Kenya. Dad, where do we even begin? You have been the cornerstone of our lives, the first hero we ever met. You were a loving, caring, kind dad to us our greatest supporter. You guided and me- mentored, us patient, me- mentored us patiently on how to live. Your presence brought a sense of security and joy that made our house a home. You were a provider who made sacrifices to ensure we lived the best lives. Since we were young, we have never lacked. Not a day have we gone to bed hungry. You have gone far and wide abroad looking for greener pastures to ensure we had what we needed and more. We are forever grateful for those huge sacrifice, sacrifices. You taught us the value of unity, not just through your words, but through your actions. You always brought us together and made us know how important family is. You taught us to check on each other. We would not go for days without talking to you, even when you were far. Even in your last moments, we were all gathered together. You were always ready with a listening ear and would always advise us and give us solutions. You made everything better. Life without, without you feels incomplete, but we love your love will, the love you gave us will always remain in our hearts. We will miss you, we will miss your laughter, your stories, the long conversations on call and how you made us feel special in every moment. We will carry forward your legacy of love, care, kindness and support. Rest peacefully, Dad. Your memory will forever be missed. Rest in peace, Dad. Thank you so much. Mama Karemi, God bless you. We want to have the tribute for, from the nieces and the nephews, which is going to be done by Alfonso Wajiko.
Today we are gathered not only to mourn the loss of a wonderful man, but to celebrate the life he lived so fully. Huka was not only a grandfather to us, but a source of wisdom, a friend and a mentor. Huka was a cheerful man with never-ending stories. Stories of his childhood served as an inspiration to us. They taught us to believe in God and the value of hard work. Wuka was very good at bringing people together and made every gathering feel special. We always looked forward to when he visited because a party would always go down. We really missed the evening walks to buy motura. He would buy motura in rolls, not pieces. The last time we met was the happiest. It breaks our heart that today we are gathered to say our goodbyes. The memories will remain in our hearts forever. Though he may not be with us in person, his legacy, love and wisdom will remain. We are grateful to have shared in the gift of your life. The memories will remain with us forever. We love you, Guka, and we'll hold you in our hearts always. Thank you so much. We thank God for every tribute. We remember him with different ways, in different lights, and we thank God. We're going to have tribute from the only daughter who is here, and that is mother. Who is going to give the tribute to the dad. Hello everyone, thank you for coming today. My name is Martha, or Daisy, as dad used to refer to me. Today, we celebrate the life of an extraordinary man, my dear father-in-law, a true pillar of strength, love, and wisdom. Dad deeply loved his family and extended that love to everyone in his community. From the moment I joined the Karajas family, he embraced me wholeheartedly, making me feel like one of his own. His warmth and inclusivity strengthened my fam our family in countless ways. I vividly recall the first Ugali I ate after arriving in the UK. You know what? It was cooked by dad. This surprised me as I wasn't used to seeing men cook. And I murmured to my husband as it felt unusual. Even before my husband said a word, not knowing that dad overheard it, he kindly explained that in UK, roles aren't categorized. He reassured me that Kamau would always share family responsibilities, a promise Kamau has kept. Thanks to you, Dad, for being an example of a devoted husband and a father. Thank you for raising the love of my life, George, and teaching him the values of family and responsibility. George, thank you for learning from dad and promise to start with you forever. Dad never saw obstacles, only opportunities to help. Whether it was driving to Banbury for school runs or stepping in during challenging times, his selflessness knew no bounds. His love for his grandchildren was unmatched. They called him Gukawanyam Nyam. The, the grandpa who brought joy and affection in their lives. Twice a week, dad would visit, shower the grandchildren with thoughtful gifts, and most importantly, his time and love. Dad, whatever you are, Daisy, Ivy, 
Karanja, and the rest of your grandchildren, we always cherish the memories you created for them. For me, dad was a rock, especially during the years I was nursing my three babies. I always treasure his comforting words. I remember he told me one day, well, Daisy, I, as long as I am alive, I will stand strong with you, both as a father and sometimes as a mother. He kept his promise. He always nurtured me. He would even bring jahe and some bone soup, boil them and bring soup to me to strengthen me during that difficulty time. He also ensured I was connected to his community by introducing me to his friends and making me feel fully supported and connected. Not only that, dad work ethic was unmatched. I remember he could call at 7 a.m. while he was already in London urging us to start the day. His unwavering encouragement and determination inspired us to strive for the best. Though he is not, no longer with us, Dad's legacy of love, resilience, and support will live forever in our hearts. We loved you, Dad, but God loved you more. Rest in peace, Dad. You will always be cherished. Farewell, dear Dad. Thank you, Mother. God bless you. We, before we hear, we sing a song. I want to bring the own the friend that they knew each other for a very long time. They work together. That is Peter. Why is Peter Kerea Bori? They worked with him for a very long, long time. So I want to give him a minute. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Francis. Thank you. Well, it is well, it is well with Mse Kamau. Well, those who don't know me, my name's uh, Mwaniki Kiriamburi. And <laughs> I met Mze Kamau on a flight to Saudi Arabia in 1996. And it was strange because we were to connect a Jida to go somewhere called Gazim. And that's where we met and he said, I think you look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I sent him, he asked me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Kenya as well. You're from coming from Kenya as well. And we were six of us. And he said, you look like someone I've met. And he told me that time he was working, before he went to start driving the trucks and rollers, he was working as a tour driver in Outspan. So I sent, because I was also working uh, for YMC as a tour driver, maybe we've met somewhere, you never know. <laughs> so we stayed with him for two years. It was all good. He was like my dad to me. And we went back home on our holiday. When we went back home, he took me to his family and we visited our span where he was working. And his friend was so overwhelmed to see him again, so they took us to a tree tops. So I had that opportunity to visit the tree top as well <laughs> from a friend. And then we shared uh, some of the stories and we stayed together, we, we boarded very well. And we even came to UK almost the same time and he was always joking and said, you know, I was given to you by your mom as my son, so I'll treat you as my son. And we've been together with him. He's been uh, 
very good done to me. He taught me so many things, and I can stand here and talk all day about the the good time we shared together and the memories. But all I would say to say, come on, I miss you. It's well, it's well. God love you more than we did. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. I don't know why I, I know it was not in the program, but I can see Brother Ken. Ken was the best man. It is unfair if you don't say a word uh, to the man that you stood behind. And it's amazing. Good evening, church. I'm Ken Wanyabura, and Mama Yabura is there. Well, it's a privilege to be given a mic this evening. And as I am, I don't talk a lot. But, but because the man who have slept is my good friend, my brother, my father, even more than a brother, we started with Muse from Saudi Arabia, where we used to work with him. We used to live about 1,200 kilometers from each other. But Muse used to drive a truck from that distance to come to my place. And so unlucky where I used to live, because he always used to come in together with Vikeri Ambori. I had raised my bed, put some locks on the legs of the bed, and put the mattress beneath the bed. And sometimes I would come at night from work, and eventually I would hear somebody snoring down there. When I look, because he was a big man, I would see only the belly up, pushing the blanket up. And I ask you, oh, how am I told you how? And he will answer, Oh, yes, I came over. One day, he was on his way coming to see me. And the devil is a liar. He rode onto the lock, the truck overturned in the desert. He was near to go that day. But God received him. He didn't go. His day came just the other day when he left us. He is a man, and he is a good man, and everyone knows Muse was a good man. He has taught us so much. Some of the things he used to tell me, I didn't take them so serious, but nowadays, I always try to remember how we used to talk, when, how he used to give me some advices, and he has taught me so much. And he introduced me all his families. And one day, he told me something unusual. He called me all the way from London to come to his house. That one is after his late wife died. And he told me, you know what? I always tell you I will surprise you one day. I told him, well, my brother, I need a surprise. Have you win lottery? He's a unfortunately not a lottery. I've got something better than a lottery. And he gave me a contact details for somebody I didn't know. I asked him, who could this be? Oh, I've got a wife. And I said, well, Muse, you can't tell me. You can't tell me you got somebody and you have never introduced to me. He told me, when do you want to go and see her? I said, all the time, Muse, I'm always available. And I can't remember, it was Friday evening, and I told him, Muse, I'm coming over. Why are you coming? I'm coming to see whoever you said you have got. And he told me, oh, so unfortunate. So unfortunate. She's so far, she will come tomorrow to visit me. I said, don't worry, Muse. Even if is so far, I will drive over at night and know the person. 
and I drove from London to Oxford, from Oxford to Reeds to pick Mama Kevin. And when I saw what kind of woman she was, I told Muse, sorry Muse, this woman, I can't afford to leave her here. I will drive back with her. It was during winter time and my car had no heating system. We drove all the way with the winter up to Muse's place. And from that day, Muse got a wife. Then later I arranged the wedding. I was the best man. And as from that day, Muse became more closer to me. Even during these uh, rate days, I was always with him. Sometimes I used to be a little bit shaken when in the morning I come from work and I see her. Miss Deco from Judy, I used to think so much before I answer the phone because I didn't want to have any negative answer. And what I used to do, I used to sleep a little bit, then I would drive from London to Oxford to come and see how Muse has spent the night. Until the last very minute, the previous day before Muse left, I was with him there, we played a lot, and he promised me that he will not go. But, so unfortunately, he left me. But one day, we're gonna be together. Thank you, Ken. I came to know Ken through Muse, and uh, he has become a good friend, so I couldn't have left you behind without saying anything. So we want to sing a song so that we can prepare ourselves to hear reading and then the word of encouragement. Let's rise up on our feet as we sing the song. Cynthia. Hallelujah. Our hymn or our song is Modo Ereri by Karo Vivo. Tiga ware mwena wako kedo edera Doshia goro ya kwa nishigia hotire Tiga wajara gerio kajera gatere Mothe meke kaga niguenyo ne Igoro, Igoro, the amount of mother where we gai, we caga magagania, o yolete, Nanikio, Goroyaqua, Eoide, Gekano, Necomena, Tenawe, we modo. Igoro, Igoro, the amount of mother where we gai, we caga magagania, o yolete, nanikio, nanikio, goroya, e yo irege cano, ne come yatinawe. We modo hereliye, wahuni ye goro ya kwana ho ni jega, koti re ke do kega, inge ho ya j todo we todo we mo he ani wai do shio de jega, na ne kio goro ya kwa. E yo le te hi goro E a ma o do mo de we We ga yi We ka ga ma ge ga ni a O yo le te hi nya 
na ne kyogoro yakwa eyo ire gekeno ne komenya tenawe we modu we eigoro igoro ya mondo mode we we gai we kagama gegania Oyore te hinya na ne kyongoro yakwa e yoire gekeno ne komenya tinawe we modu ire lewe leugo de gerei ne geda gomenye we kagam ah Garata, o mahidora geria, ei do ma komenye, tiaro sia o sio de na sio de da igoro igoro, e amando mo de we we gai we kaga amage gania. Oyore te hinya nane kyongoro yakwa e Our second reading comes from the first book of Corinthians, 15, verse 50 to 58. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the corruption inherit the incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a trickling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that, uh, that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? O oh, heads, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is a law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. Amen. We are coming to a very important time when we are going to hear the word of God from one of the ministers. I want to acknowledge the ministers of the gospel who are together with us. We want to appreciate them for coming just to stand together with his family. I know it takes the grace of God and commitment for them to be here. We have Pastor Esther together with the husband. Let's put our hands together 
And uh, I saw Mrs. Uh, Steve, all the way from Cambari, and Mrs. Kevin there. We have Minister Faith. And I don't know whether we have other ministers of the gospel who are around here. Anyone? I am not seeing. We thank God for you coming. Thank you so much for gracing this occasion. Together with us, we have uh, a man who was a friend of Mze. It is Bishop Waihenya who is going to speak to us. We share the same name, Francis. I don't know. Uh, Bishop Francis Waihenya. And I had Baba. Baba Jabi is also Francis. Mze has also Francis Minor, like me. So we are many Francis. And we thank God for Bishop Francis Waihenya. Let's put our hands together as Bishop comes to share the word of God. Thank you very much, Pastor Francis. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Are you well? Abarizen Muema. Muliaga. All right. Thank you very much. Um, yes, as Pastor Francis has said, I'm a friend to Mze. And uh, there are three things we shared. One, uh, when, when he told me where he came from, uh, in the areas of Muranga, and he knew that um, I'm just across the river on the other side, that connected us. And once again, when he also knew that uh, uh, I had a relationship in Molo because my family stayed in Molo for about nine years, that also connected us. And finally, I and Pastor Gitawa officiated his wedding, so that also connected us. Tumekua marafiki. Bwana Sifa. When I was listening to the tribute, I realized that you can only write your tributes when you are alive. Tributes are not written by people who you leave behind. Tributes are written by yourself when you are alive. So it is important that you know how we are going to share your tribute when you are not there. It is critically important and you can only do that yourself by ensuring you live a life that people will always remember. I minister with a church called Household of Faith Ministries, Nyumbaya Imani, which God gave me the grace to pioneer back in the 70s, and it's still there, I still serve. I'm a husband, I'm a father, and a grandfather. And I want to begin by acknowledging the emotions in this house, the sorrows that have been expressed uh, since uh, Mze rested, the loss, and also the love that has been shared and demonstrated since he's arrested. We are very grateful today for you, Mama Kevin. We are also grateful to Kevin. We are grateful to you, George, to you, Martha, to your sisters in Kenya, George, to the rest of the family for opening doors for us to be here. We wouldn't have been here if you never invited us. We are also gathered here today to celebrate as uh, 
one of the speakers said earlier, the life of Mzee Kamau, and to reflect on the kind of role that he has played through his earthly life. The role he has played within his family and the role he has played within the communities of faith. It has been said, and I want to repeat, Mzee Kamau was a guiding light. He was a source of wisdom. He was a model of faith. Not only for his family, but also for the broader community. Mzee Kamau played a very significant role in nurturing faith in other people. And through his actions, he touched so many lives. Recently, uh, Pastor Getawa and I went to visit him. And when Mama Kevin was coordinating the ambulance team who were coming to pick him at home, to take him to JR Hospital, he started sharing with us his planned journey to his rural home in Molo. Little did we know that his planned journey to, the, to his rural home in Molo was prophetic. So, there are so many meaningful stories that has been shared in the last few days since he rested that capture the character of Mzee Kamau. Stories that capture his kindness. Stories that capture his strength, his faithfulness, and above all, his generosity. I am sure that Mzee Kamau's family will be encouraged by the words of Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. And I want to read. The children of a righteous man who walks in integrity are blessed after him. The children of a righteous man who walks in his integrity, are blessed after him. I said Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7 for those who may be taking notes. This should be your portion, the family of Mzee Kamau. This, this particular verse should be your portion. You shall be blessed. This passage underscores faithfulness. This verse underscores integrity. This verse underscores the spiritual legacy that Mzee Kamau leaves behind. As he went holding the promise of eternal life. Today, we gather in memory of a beloved patriarch. A man who stood in our midst as a pillar of faith, as a pillar of love, as a pillar of integrity in his family and in our community. And as we reflect on the life that Mzee Kamau lived, we find ourselves comforted by the words that Jesus spoke in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. He assures his disciples, saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare that place for you, when the place is ready, I will come back for you so that I can receive you to myself. That where I am, there you will be also. And when Thomas was trying to ask to tell him, Lord, we don't seem to know where you are going. Jesus told him, when he said, we do not know the way, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. This was the promise of eternal life. Because in this passage we hear Jesus speaking to his followers. And that was before his crucifixion. And he's preparing them for a world without his physical presence. He speaks words of comfort to them. And he offers promises of eternal life. Today, as we celebrate the life of Zekamau, a faithful man, we find comfort in this promise of Jesus Christ. Knowing that he too is in the presence of the Father. Let us explore the richness of this passage that I have shared. And I want us to consider th only three critical lessons that we can learn from this passage. The first lesson that we learn from this passage is the call to trust. There's nothing more precious in this world than trust. If there is no trust in the family, that family is broken. And when there is no trust in the family, there is no trust in the society. And when there is no trust in the society, there is no trust in the government. And there is no trust in the world. So trust is so critical. And that's the first lesson we learn from that particular verse. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Trust in me. Trust in my father. He is the one who has made the promise. And he starts by inviting people and his disciples to trust. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, my father, and believe also in me. You know, in times of sorrow and loss like this, our hearts are naturally heavy. We are troubled by the pain of our physical separation from the Kamau. Yes. But let me assure you that Jesus knows this. And his words here Gently encourage you and encourage me and encourage all of us to place our trust in him and to place our trust in the Father. Our patriarch, Mzee Kamau, embodied this call of trust in his life. And throughout his life, he faced many challenges. But he remained steadfast in his faith, trusting in God's provision and trusting in God's guidance. He taught his family, like we have, we have heard them say, and all those that knew him, that faith means surrendering to God, especially in the face of uncertainty 
And this trust is a legacy that he leaves for you and me to carry forward. To reinforce the theme of trust, we all remember the words of the psalmist in Psalms 23 verses 1 to 4. This is what reinforces the theme of trusting in God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because he makes me lie down in green pastures. He, he uh, leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness. And he does this for his name's sake. And the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear no evil. For you are with me because you are rod and you are staff. They comfort me. These verses remind us that we are never alone in this journey. God is always with us. He's always with us, shepherding us. Even in these valleys of this life. Even now as we mourn, we can rest in the assurance that Mzee Kamau is safe in the hands of the chief shepherd. The second lesson we learn in John chapter 14 verse 1 to 6 is the promise of eternity. Where Jesus says in my father's house there are many rooms. There is a room for you. He continues to promise in my father's house are many rooms. This image of the heavenly home is a source of hope. It's a source of comfort for us believers. Reminding us that all of us that life on earth here is just an introduction of something much greater. And I want to tell you today, if you consider life here as the end, you are in trouble. Life here is the tip of the iceberg of the, life of the kind of life that God has in store for us. Jesus assures us that he has a prepared a place for each one of us who are his followers. A place where there is no more pain. A place where there is no more sorrow. A place where there is no more separation. Our patriarch, Mzee Kamau, he lived with his eternal perspective. He knew that his true home it's not here on earth. But the true home was with his father. He spent his life building up treasures in heaven. That is what we should do. Spend your life building treasures in heaven, not here. Pouring, he poured his love into other people. He sowed seeds seeds of faith in other people that will continue to grow not only in his family but also in this community and in the regions beyond. His life was marked by a deep hope. Deep hope in the promises of God. A hope that we now share in this memorial service today. 
to further strengthen our understanding of this promise, let us consider what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Paul says, For we know that if our earthly, in this our earthly house, which he calls a tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands. It is a house that is eternal in the heavens. Your body is a tent. A tent is a very temporary thing. It's not permanent. You know some people are so proud they never think. God creates them, God creates them so beautiful, so handsome. And as a result of that, they become proud. But I want to remind you, your body is a tent. And it's going to be destroyed one day. And when it is destroyed, if you don't have a building up there, you will be in trouble. I don't want to be in trouble. Because this scripture reminds us and reminds you our earthly bodies are like temporary tents that are so fragile and so perishable. That is why when somebody rests, we look for a place to put that body. We don't put it at home. Even in the old days when uh, uh, in, in my culture people are still left at home, we would put charcoal and banana stumps to keep cold. Because this is perishable, this is fragile. But in heaven, where the promised room is, God has prepared an eternal, unshakable dwelling. It cannot be shaked by anything, by anybody. Today, we find comfort in knowing that Mzee Kamau has reached his eternal home. Now, as I conclude, let me tell you the third lesson that we learned here. The third lesson is the way through Christ. He said there is no other way. There are so many ways people know. But it doesn't matter what you know. What is important is what God wants you to know. Not what you know. We know so much. And some of the things we know are so wrong. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. He concludes this passage with a very profound declaration. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one will get to the Father unless they pass through me. So in this portion of scripture, Jesus reveals that he is the only path to the Father and to eternal life. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus paved the way for us to be reconciled to God. Our patriarch, Mzee Kamau, understood and embraced this truth. His life bore witness to the, to the transformative power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He knew that salvation comes only through Christ. And he shared this truth fully, encouraging other people to seek a relationship with Jesus. He has now seen the fulfillment of this promise, having stepped into the presence of his Savior, Jesus Christ. And to understand this more fully, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
no height, no depth, no any created thing can separate us from the love of God, which is only anchored in Christ Jesus. This is an assurance that because of Jesus, Mzee Kamau has passed from this life into a life that will never end. He is held forever in the love of God. And that same love remains with us today. And we need to live. We need to live in the light of this legacy. As we reflect on these scriptures, we are reminded that we too are called to live with the same faith. We are called to live with the same hope. We are called to live in the same love that defined Mse Kamau's life. His legacy is not one of earthly achievements, but one of faithfulness to God and love for other people. We honor him today, not only by remembering him, but by also living out the principles that he held so dear. And this is why Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 12 says, as we continue to run this race with endurance, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, every weight that suppresses you not to run this race. So that you can finish the race well. Mzee Kamau has joined this great cloud of witnesses and is encouraging us now to remain faithful, live in love, keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our life. And in honoring his memory, let us embrace this calling, growing in faith and pressing forward in hope. I want to conclude by appealing to you. Let us all remember this man. This man who lived with a deep faith. A faith that was anchored in the promises of God. We are comforted by the words of Jesus in the passage that we have shared in John chapter 14. Knowing that our loved one has entered in the place prepared for him by Christ himself. Let us take heart. These words of Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Even as we grieve, we hold on to the promises of Christ, finding peace in his love. And the hope of his victory over death, as the scripture has said, and the strength of the legacy of our dear patriarch, Mzee Kamau. As we close this time of reflection, may we carry forward the values that he lived by, that includes trusting God, hoping in eternity, and holding our faith in Christ alone. Let us remember that this journey has not ended, but it has simply moved, he has simply moved into the realm of eternity where there is joy in the presence of his Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, Mama Kevin. I want to encourage you, Kevin. I want to encourage you, George, Martha, and the extended family and the loved ones that you all need to carry on Mzee Kamau's legacy by living out the values that he cherished. I urge you as a family, community, to hold fast to the faith and the integrity that he demonstrated. I remind you as a family and a community of faith that honoring his memory is also a commitment to follow the path that he laid that is grounded in love, faith, and service to God. 
Let me now close with a song I dedicate to him today. And in this song, I want you to ponder prayerfully for the transformation of your soul. Mohodaru aibura aemu tawa ahanyo ba aja akubu wa wagi nya ho ba igoro no kyo ba the naido osio the Jehovah maodo mother we kaga no the guna iyoto to igwere the doga avalie. Mahale to a maito ibu ukuine. Gahai ne idwe to kwe Ona toga ago karalia. We modi gudi ikeria. To kubo de le maitia. No igole maido one. Twe jera inde na twe ejaga. Na ngaragu na konyota Na doiga toligi iselia Weke hoti mova amaki Wake hoto tulekele Toduga imo komalea Wadha birye no kia amura Waigelela metuwe ito Nei dwe to amageire vata bo reizi wa isiraeli me ya mori motuo ere jehova maguta amalea wa itereire goro situ moi imeterole emero aku ne to amasonori ivirie Kwe do le le siago kobe iria ito ele to ale aku to ago daida aliri kana kwe oke ka kwambu uruguo mahava ni male amo uruguo asure irio mote iguru na abe to ayo abati dio na ire kande rosio iki na magogo na maveru na odigu to ge kurania na metu go adolele to abuda ukira goro so kere goro sio de Jesu ke gogona kiama Iri kana we dona da Iri asiato milio tige Gehe tege oda maki igoro Oho geo kade konya aliruo We mudheru aholiruo Na ke boko tuho noke we mudheru aholiruo Na ke boko to honoke. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I've been asked to invite the family to stand kindly. All the family members who are here, please come in front.
Thank you. We would like to pray for this family and by extension, the family at home. May I request you to stand, please? I want you to utter a word. Speak with God. Speak with God about this family. Because many times I lost my dad last year, I lost my mom last year, and when sometimes there is death in the family, there are a lot of things that happen. And we want to cover this family. So I want you to utter a word to God about this family. Remember them in the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Open your mouth and tell God something about this family. Open your mouth and tell God about this family. Speak to God about this family. I know you have something you can tell God about this family. You can say it loudly. You can say it in heart. You can say it the way you choose. But tell God something about this family. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Everlasting Father, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come before your very presence this evening to thank you for your faithfulness. Father, before this family came to earth, you were there. You purposed it in your heart before you brought them to this earth. And we want to thank you for every member of this family. We thank you, Lord, this moment because of their patriarch that has left them. And we want to commit them into your hands. The sons, the daughters, and the dear wife and the extended family, we commit them into your able hands. Father, we want to pray that you are going to speak to them words of wisdom. The wisdom that they have learned from Mze. We pray that today that wisdom shall be their portion. And when they sit to discuss about themselves, to discuss about the welfare of their family, to discuss about the prosperity of their family, to discuss about how they will proceed and move forward. We pray that words of wisdom shall be their portion, that words of knowledge shall be their portion. And that you shall not only sit with them in that meeting. You shall walk with them. I pray that almighty God. The wisdom of Solomon shall be their portion. In their judgments. 
that wisdom shall be their portion. In their love for one another, that demonstration will be there as a legacy that has been left by the patriarch. I pray that boards of peace that cannot be broken shall tie this family together. I pray that they shall continue to build together in unity and in purpose for the glory of your name. I pray that the fear of God shall be their portion in this family. And that that fear shall instruct them on how to live based on your word and based on the promises that you have made. So I pray for them individually. I pray for them collectively as a family that blessings shall be their portion. We resist everybody who can come their way to utter words of distress to them, to utter words of confusion, words that can mislead, misinformation. We resist those kind of people in this family in the name of Jesus. And we pray that they will not have a place in this family. And any words that they shall utter shall be for destruction. Those words shall be destroyed. Because they have no place in this family. I pray that Holy Spirit you shall take control. Control of this family. As you guide them and lead them into all the truth. That love, that board of love shall not be shaken in this family. We thank you, Father, for bringing them together. We thank you, Lord. We refuse any disagreement. And if it is there, it will be settled amicably in their midst. If they can't settle it, lead them to wise men who can be able to do that. I pray that these disagreements that may arose now or in the future shall always be solved amicably among us themselves. They shall always seek each other for wisdom, seek each other for knowledge. Humility shall be their portion. And as they humble before you, Lord, you shall be the pillar that cannot be shaken in this house to the glory of your name. We thank you, Father, as we commit them into your hands. Protect them against evil. Protect them against any calamities that may be directed to them. Give them a place to stand that cannot be shaken. When all the other ground is shaking, give them a rock upon which they can stand. Because they are already victors. They are already conquerors. We thank you for each one of them. We thank you for their children. We thank you for the extended family. Bless them, Lord, and prosper them to the glory of your name. And as they prepare to take the body back to Kenya, Father, we pray that flight and journey masses shall be their portion. Every program Everything planned shall go according to plan. I know we can plan, but it's you that executes the plan. And as you execute this plan, our Father, we pray that your will shall be done. And everything said and done, you shall receive the glory and receive the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Bishop. Let's put our hands together for Bishop for those words.
God bless you as I for my take home the preaching of the word today is that I need to light my riga say well. My 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 ob, this is obituary. My my obituary. I need to write it when I'm leaving. 2016, a friend of mine invited me to take them to a barrio that they had lost a cousin. And when the urology was led, when it came to the job or the cause of death, they said he died at work when he was working. And when I was trying to ask the cousin where he was working, he was ganged down at work. That means his work was to lift things. So he was gunned at work. He died at work. I want to work to die in the work of the Lord. <laughs> Not in the work of <laughs> messing other people's <laughs> stuff. And uh, that stuck in my head up to this day. That gentleman died at work. Because he was a robber. So let's light our, our urology when we are alive. I have three things to do so that we can close this meeting. So we have 15 minutes with those who are, we are sharing with. So we are taking two minutes each, and then we are out of this place. And uh, the first person we are sharing with is the leader of men's group in Oxford, Mr. Evans. <laughs> You are two minutes. The speaker will just put off the bell. Good evening. Habari zenu. Salimiane. Sasa unakata kuinua mkono. Ninini kwa hapa? It's good when people are together. And uh, for those who we haven't met, my name is uh, Ivanson Kibe. And some call me Baba Shiko. It's also my good name. Others call me Baba Kibe. And all those are my names. And I also have a local name. Uh, for those who are from Oxford, they, are, they know Baba County is around. Musalimia Baba County. It's a lovely evening when we talk about this gentleman. This is a wonderful man that has rested. Wonderful people don't die, they just rest. I knew him there when he, when he arrived in Oxford. And uh, the first thing that I noted with him is the smile. I don't know within the generation, within the DNA, who will pick that, but it's something that needs, someone needs to pick it so that we can remember Mze very well. He could always smile when you meet. Mze was a member of uh, Kenyan Oxfordshire men group where we as men fellowship together in terms of knowing how we are getting on. It's another way of uh, thinking about your brother. We are a brother's keeper, nothing much. So if you are out there and you haven't joined the Kenyan men, Kenyan Oxford men, Oxfordshire men, come and join us. You'll never regret. We always have fun. 
Fortunately, on our last supper on the 29th of June, Mze managed to come to be with us. And he was very, very, very jolly on that day. I'm sure some of you who have been able to see the photographs of the day, the photos of the day that were taken by our good Mark Paraparazzi. We have our own very good uh, photographer called Mark. Mze took so many photographs with so many people. And uh, everywhere he walked, he could uh, say hello. And uh, you know Mze can, can keep you on your toes all the time. So I'm talking about a person who has been with us, our, our paid up member in that organization. And above that, a good friend of mine. The other thing, so many people have talked about him there, but I've not had two things I have not had some people talk about. Mze was an Ari Raisa. Because uh, most of the times when I'm going to, to London in the morning, we used to meet in, in, in the middle somewhere around Wycom. Around 6, 6.30, Mze is coming back from London. So I don't know what time he used to start. So he was an Ari Raisa. The other thing is, and that is, I think that kept him going, is walking with a gentleman I can see over there called Kevin. They could walk all the way from Bragbad Lays slowly, slowly, slowly. The next, the next minute, I'll pass them maybe three, two, three spaces, going back, coming back, and I, the last time I'll find them on, on the high street. So Mze was a very good, active wa walker. And uh, if I say that, most people who know him know he is very active. Mimi sina mengi ya kusema ya mzee. Nikianza kusema, nitasema mpaka kesho na kesho kutuwa na mtonogo. Lakini, he was a good man. All I can, all I can say is, mumeacho na mzee, look after each other. I'm sure you guys knows what mzee liked. Don't go out, outside of what he liked. Ili alikuwa na penda, pembe, pendeni. Because if you don't, he'll come back in his own ways to ask you that question. Slowly, why are you doing this? Where kama uhoro yoruteteko? So keep to the, keep to the lanes. Pendeni vile vita, izile vitu ambazo hazwezi kumkashirisha. And uh, you always, always live in peace, and I'm sure he's in a good place. I won't talk much. There's no time. I think I've overwrapped somebody's minutes. But Asante uh, Sana, after this, we will post the, the QR code on uh, the, the groups around for those who would like to join our group. You are more than welcome. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. Thank you, Baba Shiko. He was short with the one minute because he knew we are neighbors. I can't quarrel him. And he's older than me, so, so he's around. The other person you are going to hear from is the person who is giving vote of thanks on behalf of the family, Bona Kennedy. Then we have the last gentleman. Uh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'll just request uh, uh, MC here, Pastor Francis, just give me a minute, if you can permit me, please. Uh, there's a gentleman here and a lady who have been worshipping with uh, Mze. And I'll, it will be an honor as well for them to say something about uh, Mze, Samuel. Roy and Mandy, please. Do you mind if you have a minute just to say something and grip? Because you know the family. Okay. 
Um, I didn't have anything prepared, but uh, my memories of Sam are quite a few. I always remember Sam as, um, well, his, his arms, they were as big as my legs. <laughs> you know, I, I, said to, I said to Sam, if I bumped into you, I'll be hitting the floor, you know, because he, uh, I don't mean to, to be rude, but he was built like a brick shed, you know. <laughs> and these bricks were laid properly and, you know, uh, bruises, bruises. But yeah, I, I had some, uh, you mentioned about, somebody mentioned about stories. Sam would occasionally on a Sunday morning uh, <laughs> after church, we were having uh, biscuits uh, and a cup of tea, and uh, he would launch into a story. I, I just mentioned one or two words, you know, I said to him, I, you know, I did a bit of driving in my time, and because uh, I'm hundreds of years old now. No, you're supposed to say I don't look old. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and he said, you know, I, I mentioned driving and that was it. He was off. I had the whole story <laughs> ab about Saudi Arabia and he was driving hundreds and hundreds of miles. And the hours and hours he was behind the wheel. I was impressed with that. Because that takes some doing, you know, uh, staying awake, you know, matchsticks in the eyes and all that. But... Uh, yeah, I had some good laughs with him. He made me laugh. He made me laugh. And uh, I want to thank you for letting me say a few words. Do you, do you want to say anything, Mandy? No, she's not prepared. <laughs> and neither, neither was I. But thank you, Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice one. Give a big round of applause, please. My name, for so those who don't know me, I'm Brother Kamal. Or Baba Kerry. And allow me just to say a few things about Mze. Especially, uh, just going to direct this to you, Kamal. You know, your father was a man of faith, man of integrity. And I can echo what Bishop has said and everyone else who stood here. He's passed the baton to you. You are the pillar of the family now. I remember when my, pa my dad passed on as well. Everyone was telling me, you know what? Everyone will be looking up to you. Sometimes you may make the wrong decisions, but don't be afraid. Look up to Jesus. Lean on his love for you. And he'll also guide you. If you lack wisdom, ask for it. Seek counsel to people who are full of faith. And they'll guide you. Make him proud. And a few remarks ab about Mze as well. We used to drive to London every Sunday to go to church. He was a man of faith, a man who believed in the Lord. And I know where he is right now. He's rejoicing. So let's no mourn, but rejoice for he has set an example. He has left a legacy. Let's be proud of that. I'll read the, I'll say the vote of thanks on behalf of the family. On behalf of Mze Kamal's family, I would like to extend our deepest gratitude to each and every one of you who have gathered here today to honor and remember Samuel Karanja Kamal, also known as Mze Kamal. Your presence is a testament to the love, respect, and impact he had on all of us, and we are truly grateful for your support during this time. Thank you for, jo for joining us in celebrating his life and legacy. We are truly grateful to all who have traveled to be here today, as well as to those who have kept us in their thoughts and prayers from afar. Your presence, kindness, and support mean more to us than words can express. In this time of remembrance, your love and compassion have brought us strength and comfort. Thank you for standing with us. We would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Pastor Francis and the entire Revival Church Ministries for leading this service with so much compassion and grace. 
your comforting words and guidance have, prov have, have provided us with immense strength during this time of sorrow. We are, deep, we are deeply grateful for your support and for helping us honor Mzee's memory with dignity and love. A special thanks goes to Mzee's family, his devoted wife, Judy Karanja, whose unwavering commitment and love sustained him from the day she said, I do, until his final breath. To Kamau, Kevin, and, other, and others in Kenya who have shared heartfelt stories, cherished memories, and words of kindness about their father. We are profoundly grateful. These reflections have reminded us of the joy, love, and kindness he brought into all of our lives, bringing comfort and peace during this time. Thank you for helping us remember him with such warmth and love. We are deeply grateful to all our friends and extended families who have stood by us from the time Mze fell ill to the day he went home to be with the Lord. Your unwavering support, prayers, and countless sacrifices have brought us strength and comfort beyond words. The gestures of love and friendship you have shown have touched us deeply and we will carry this kindness in our hearts always. Thank you for walking this journey with us. To everyone here, thank you for being part of this farewell. For honoring Samuel Karanja Kamau, also known as Mze Kamau, and for standing for us in for standing by us in this difficult time. Your love and support will help us as we move forward. I would like to take this moment to recognize and express our deep appreciation for, for Liz and her family. <laughs> Liz works at the JR Hospital, for those who know where JR is. And she has shown incredible dedication and compassion since the day Mze was admitted. She went above and beyond to ensure he was well cared for. And her kindness and commitment have been a great comfort to our family. Thank you, Liz, for your unwavering support and the loving care you provided to Mze. As I wind up, I would like to appreciate each one of you again for everything you have done. You've stood with this family. Despite all the challenges, despite all the storms that we are facing, but together we have overcome. We know even tomorrow, we continue to pray for the family as they travel back to Kenya. Uh, it's a long flight, and again, by road, it's, by, it's uh, four hours tomorrow. So let's keep, let's keep them in our prayers, and I'm sure everything will be successful. It will go according to God's plan. Thank you once again. And shalom. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kennedy. God bless you. The last person to speak is the person who was the chairman of uh, whatever was happening, Brother Paul, a very close friend of uh, Muse, Brother Paul. Good evening, all of you. How are you? Bwana Sifiwe. Praise the Lord. Can you wave me, please? Hallelujah. Good to see you all. To me, I'm taking this as a celebration of time. I mean, of life, rather. Um, God has been gracious to Mze. If you have ever seen somebody who is really healthy in life, it's Mze. You know, when he went to hospital, he was like, this is a prison, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have so many stories about Mzee. Let me, let me just stop there. Uh, I don't know how we came up with this date of uh, memorial. Today is my birthday. <laughs> what a way to celebrate a man like Mzee. What a way. What a way. Uh, at least men chomad can your mother for me, especially one. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. 
I've worked with him. I've known Mzee for a long time, long time. I've worked with him for 14 years, and what a man, you know. We connected in many fronts, you know. Um, so we ha I have a lot of stories to tell. I don't know what story to tell today. Um, recently, he took me to hospital. Not too long ago. I think it was uh, April or May there. I, I, my doctors are in London. Just in case we haven't met. I got new lungs. Yeah. New lungs, yes, yes. <laughs> If you just wonder how that happens, this is what we call the lung transplant. So I got double new lungs last year. <laughs> and I thank God for that. So Mze, Mze took me to hospital for clinic. And we, after the clinic, normally all day. So we, I say, Mze, let me go and buy you some meals. So I'm, a meal, we share a meal somewhere. So we went to a nice uh, restaurant uh, by, this, by, the, by a, a nice river. And we were having stories there. And one thing that has never been comfortable with me is the size of my family. <laughs> so he was giving me a lecture. He was saying, hey, let me talk in Kikuyu. <laughs> so he was telling me, hey, Mudu, like it's time to have I can get it to So he went on, I said, yeah, yeah. So he said, look, there the family are queen in the <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> for those who don't understand that Greek, yeah, somebody will interpret for you. <laughs> so I was asking him, uh, okay, you go read, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was, I was making, key, I mean, I was j making jokes. I was, then he said, he said, he said, he said, <laughs> and we kept on chatting. So we went on and on. You know? And he was saying, she had any movie though. I was kidding, I was saying, <laughs> And he was saying, We are anywhere three you have the I mean, we had a bit of a chat, and it was a laughter. He wasn't laughing, he was serious, but me, I was joking, I was laughing. So we kind of agreed, you know, on some factors there. So Mze was such, I'll miss him, I'll miss him, you know. He was such a good man to be around. Uh, let me, I'm just, I was, uh, you give me a mandate to be the chairman of the wonderful team, a wonderful committee, and all of you. Where do I start? You know, this is like managing Man City. Is it Man City? Sorry, yes or no? <laughs> uh, or is it Man, Man United of the world? During the time of... Uh, 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 <laughs> during the time of Alex Ferguson. I want to appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. We came up with, our bu with a budget. You know, the whole infrastructure of repatriating somebody back to Kenya. And it's a lot of money. And you know what? You surpassed that. You hit the ceiling and come on, appreciate yourself. I know, I know our treasurer is there and she kept on uh, uh, updating us on the, how much we have given. We haven't got any debt and we have cleared things and we thank God for everything. We paid their tickets, we paid the funeral directors. We supported the team in Kenya as well. So we thank God. Receive all our appreciation from the, the wonderful committee team. May I ask all the committees to stand up and we recognize you where you are placed, all the committee members, and I ask the treasurer, the tra uh, secretary, come forward, please. We need to appreciate each other. Yes, thank you, thank you. And Kennedy, the Amabera for George. Come, come, come forward. This was the team that, you know, the secretary there, she called. We've come to connect now, you know. These are the team, the wonderful team. Thank you so much. Come on, put your hands together for this wonderful team. They burned the midnight oil to see that everything is coming together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't want to introduce them one by one. You can see them 
every time something came up, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, you know. Thank you so much. God bless you. You may take a seat in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate that. I want to appreciate every volunteer. You know, every time we came up with something and we floated on the, on the page, you know, a volunteer of uh, cooking and uh, parking attendants and security, ushering people are saying, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Ah, man, you give us an easy time. Uh, Pastor, you've been appreciated. I know um, Zay wasn't a church member here, but by extension, he was a church member here. You know, I don't know how, but it happened. Muse was known by nearly everyone here, you know, in this church. And we could not, when Pastor, his pastor, Pastor Charles, was to travel to Africa, our pastor took over. Let's give a, a hand of applause to <laughs> our pastor. We have, we have had a Zoom session for over, over a week, I think a week and a half, just about there. And we had people sharing the word. Everyone requested to share the word. They came forth, leading the Zoom. Even the, you know, that was amazing. You know, uh, I can't really appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. And, uh, you know, we, the, did you like the funeral program? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. And the banners? Yeah. Where is Edward? Brother Edward, are you gone? Oh, he's there. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. For that gentleman, you know, it was a record time. He was, he was chatting to me at 2, 2 a.m. in the morning and saying, I'm doing this, I'm doing, you know. We managed to print, uh, he, well, let's say we managed to print this in about two days, which normally takes a long time. Thank you so much, Brother Edward. Wow. As I mentioned, the, the, the finances came from left, right, and center. The uh, leader of the, of the men in Oxfordshire you know, organize his team and they throw a chunk of uh, money into the account. Uh, the team in the U.S., they did the same. And you guys, I don't know, I was looking, it's hundreds of people have given. And you know what? I was looking at this and I'm thinking, this is the seed that Muse have sown in the past. You know, everything that we do in life is a seed. Muse was a giver. Muse was generous, you know? He was so generous. And you have made us to do what we planned right from the beginning, even without the finances. And we have prepared a nice meal to share with each and every one of you. So after this, don't rush out. We go meal there, and let's celebrate the life of Mze by sharing together. And Mze, that was his lifestyle. Every time he was off, he would call me, hey, I'm the way off. Yeah, okay, joke. <laughs> And we will have a good time. I don't know whether I've appreciated everybody and Revival House, uh, entire Revival House, you know. Today, as a cheese, you know, we had a problem of getting a hall to hold this memorial. And we approached the church that meets here. There's a church that meets here on Tuesday, Brazilian church. And we said, oh, we have left, we have lost a loved one. And they said, we're going to cancel our meeting, you know. Uh, we, let's appreciate that Brazilian church, although they are not here. So thank you so much. If anybody feel like they haven't been acknowledged, I acknowledge you. You have done so well. God bless you. And uh, we wish you all the best, uh, Kamau's and family and Mama Kevin. Oh, Mama Kevin, we can never forget. You know, this lady, I've been to their house numerous times, and she has looked after them and said, come on, let's give a round of applause to you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I think I'll stop at that because of our time. I want to bring Mama Kamau Nyamboto to say a prayer as we plan to enjoy the meal. Make your way forward, please, our sister. And uh, thank you so much for coming. You know, today being a work day and you are here. Appreciate yourself, please, in Jesus' name. As our sister, pray and give us a direction how we are going to enjoy the refreshment. God bless. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Nyamboto, Mama Kamau. I'm from Oxford. And we are grateful for you coming. I've just been asked to pray. And we are going to pray for the food. And also we want to thank the team that made the lovely meal for us. So we are going to pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name. We honor you tonight because you've been Ebenezer. You've been a great God and a faithful God to each one of us. We want to thank you for the gift of life. 
are living for the, this day that you've made, that we may rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the life of our dad. As we celebrate him today, uh, as we share a meal in his celebration, Jehovah God, we thank you, Jehovah God, and give you all the praise and honor, for it is in Jesus' name we pray, trust and believe. Amen. Amen. So, um, we've got plenty of food that has been...